Our next performer is 12 years of age. This is Lindsay Pagano, ladies and gentlemen. Lindsay Pagano. I feel like I came out of the womb singing. I think I could sing before I could speak. It was just kind of one of those things. I mean, I just I just grew up in that environment. You know, my mom was always walking around singing. They always had band practices at our house and I just kind of would watch. And then after a while, I was just kind of like, okay, I think it's my turn. When I when I saw Mariah Carey, she's, I mean, she's the whole reason I started singing. Like, when I saw her, that was it for me. I grew up around like, you know, Guns N' Roses and Aerosmith, um, Roxette was a big one. Mostly it was a lot of like power singers when I was, when I was really learning how to sing at that time. So it was like Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, um, Whitney Houston, and Aretha Franklin was a big one too. called Love and Faith and Inspiration. My teachers would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like everyone would else be like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. I'd be like, I want to be a singer. Love can be complicated or too often mistranslated. One word for all dynamics leads to problematic. The two big experiences, I mean, overall was probably spending every day in the studio. So like recording the album and probably tour, because I think they were, the, they were the two most um, different kind of lifestyles that I had to take on. Like when I was in the studio, I was doing homeschooling because I was like 14. And then, I mean, tour is, tour is just a completely different kind of lifestyle in its own. I mean, getting to perform every night instead of, you know, doing my homework and watching TV is, is definitely something that's not the average teenager's thing to do at the moment. driving in the car and I'll, I'll be like oh that's a great line for a song and I'll call somebody and I'll be like write this down it just kind of comes and and goes and it's, I think it's kind of what's fun about it groups of friends where I can be in the studio for hours or you know I can go to LA and I can do you know everything that I do and I will come home and nothing has changed at all and my mom will never hesitate to tell me to empty the dishwasher ever <laughs> ever trust me on that one <laughs> I hope to 
see myself on tour. I hope to see myself signed again and um, you know, hopefully, hopefully being on tour and just, just doing music professionally 24-7. Um, Many people do not get to work with Paul McCartney, you know? And I'm just, I'm just really grateful that I got to do it and the song came out really good. My sister and I just kind of randomly bumped into him in the hallway because we were recording in the same studio. He had suggested at one point that I record a song of his called So Bad, and I'd never heard it before, so he played it for me, and I had a, an upcoming press visit to New York coming, so I just kind of laid something down for it, you know, really quickly because my producer at the time, Jude Cole, was like, if Paul McCartney suggests that you cut something, you cut it. <laughs> you don't understand. So. I did it and then I came back and he said, he said, you know, have you listened to the song? And I said, I said, no. And he was like, oh, well go in and, and you know, tell me what you think. And I was kind of like, okay. So Jude, you know, hit play and Paul had put his own, he turned it into a duet while I was gone. It was quite the experience. And I don't think I, I understood at the time how big of a deal it was, um, but it was definitely, it was definitely something to remember. So